on drama for their network. And having grown up in the church, I kind of drew on, you know, um, all the things that made an impact on me growing up in the church. You know, of course, we you know, a little creative license to um, get it to the TV screen. But it was kind of really a collaborative effort with the network to come up with this concept. I mean, I created the, the, the actual characters and the, the town, but it was really was in the development process, you know, very collaborative with the network. Um, bringing the story to life, and um, you know, people seem to enjoy it. Great. So that leads into, you said that the network and the producers uh, uh, decided to kind of create this and build these characters and build the story. So Carlo Handy, who is the executive producer and the man, the hands, the man that dealt with all the creation and dealing this whole team together to make this what it is, a successful series, drama series. So, Ricardo, kind of give us a little overview of taking it from what Ty just said and, and how it developed into what it is today, which is, uh, again, a very successful drama series. Ricardo? Hello. Hello, Ricardo. Um, all right. Well, you know what? That's, that's, Ricardo, we'll go back to him in regards to that. So, Vanessa Bell Calloway, oh, Lord. You have everybody like, oh, God, did she do this? What is she doing? She's amazing. Vanessa, give us an overview. Yes, Lady, Lady Ella Lady Ella is um, very opportunistic. And last season we saw her climb the social ladder and the political ladder. Uh, although she lost her husband, she, you know, she still has great aspirations and desires. And I think even, strangely enough, even his death has given her more power in her community, in her church, you know. And we saw her win uh, her election to her bid to be mayor. So now she's the mayor of Cyprus this season. And needless to say that it's either ladies L.O. way or no way at all. So she's finding a way to get her allies together, and she's finding a way to squash anybody who stands in her way. So she's pretty much, you're pretty much going to see the same Lady Alice you saw last season, but you're going to see her just a little bit stronger, a little bit more involved, and she gets a little more devious. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, and then we have Kristen Keyes. Oh, Kristen, give me an overview of, of your character and uh, how you see that character develop a little bit for this season. Well, in the first season, I think Levi was, was primarily mostly a saint. And I think um, in developing this, um, I think he's a lot more of a center this season, which is fun. It makes it more interesting. Um, some unexpected things kind of help push him over the the edge. You know, not, he's not full-on thug life per se, but, um, you know, he, he's definitely a lot uh, – uh, he's, he's a little more – uh, willing to get his hands dirty with some things because of the way, you know, some, some personal things and some business things shake out. And, yeah, I definitely think they'll be surprised, but I think they're, they're welcome changes because, you know, no one wants to have their character be super safe the whole time. So I'm glad that they changed it up and, and developed him a little more. And, and you know, I'm, I'm glad it went the way it did, but I, I like all the changes. I think the fans will too. Great. Thank you. And then, uh, shoot, Mr. Clifton Powell, please. I'm here. Can you give us an overview about your character and uh, uh, any little tidbits you want to give us before we um, move along? Well, just to be clear with everybody, Rex is going to crush everybody, so that's all I'm going to say. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, Rex, I think, I think what, what Christian said is kind of apropos to what's happening with Rex. I think, you know, Rex was just – all sinful <laughs> in the first season <laughs> and, and <laughs> with no redeeming qualities. And I think there are some twists and turns that happen in season two where we get a chance to see that Rex actually is emotional and has some uh, other dimensions to his character. But Rex, you know, Rex is struggling, you know, and we'll see this in season two, struggling with where he really should be, you know, because the life in the streets is beginning to wear him down. And we're going to see some interesting twists and turns in Rex in terms of, you know, how tough he is, but how vulnerable he is. So that's, that's interesting for me to play because nobody is all bad all the time, you know, so it's, it's fun to be able to kind of explore some different levels of Rex and, 
you know, have him struggle with, you know, having to grow in, in different places uh, spiritually and emotionally. Wow. That's great. Um, well, Carlo, you're back. Can, so, uh, can you guys hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, we can, perfect. We can hear you before. So uh, back to you when we're talking about, and uh, Ty talked about how this, how she brought the story to Bounce, and then you guys <laughs> took from there and helped develop uh, other yeah. parts of the story. So can you uh, kind of give an overview of that and where we might be looking at going this season? No problem. So, yeah, so the origins of of, of, so, of uh, Bounce looking at doing a drama really was us looking at, you know, being innovative. You know, we're a, a new network and um, growing network. We wanted to kind of go into a space that hadn't been tapped. And at the, at the time, this was a, definitely a space that was true to African-American culture. And you could get pretty much every character, you know, that you would meet in, in the African-American community would, would pass through the black church. And so that's kind of where we started. And we developed, uh, you know, together with Ty and, and um, a, a great show, a great show that's that really been received well and, you know, definitely been uh, received well by our audience. Um, and so we wanted to just continue to build on that this season with season two um, and, and go into that community a bit more. So I think the big thing you'll see this season um, different than season one is you'll see the greater community around uh, around Greater Hope, the Baptist Church, you'll see uh, more of the characters' um, lives and work, and you know all the other um, you know all the other things that go into building a community. Um, you know, the, you know, you'll see you'll see the mayor and the city and the government op- how that operates. You'll see the police and how they operate. You'll see the criminals how they operate. But then, more importantly than all of that, you know, all of our characters we want to make sure they were very dynamic and multidimensional. You know, a lot of times you see black characters kind of just one way on a lot of other networks. And so on on this on this show, it was very important to us to make sure the characters, you know, just felt like real people had multidimensionals. No one's all the way perfect, bad or good. You know, so. Um, that 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 was the that's what you'll see a lot of this season. Great, thank you, thank you, thank you. I think also Demetria, did you just join us? Because uh, we had her name on. Okay, well let's move along. Miss um, Jasmine Burke, can you uh, let's talk about the overview about your character and uh, kind of tell us a little bit about where you feel you are for this season, your character. Yes, absolutely. Hello, everybody on the call. Thank you for being on the call. We're so grateful that you guys are back with us, and um, we are about to bring you an amazing season two. Um, my character, Dr. Christie, she's still sinning. <laughs> she's still sinning. Nothing has changed about that, but now we're going to see in season two the sinning catch up to her, and she's going to, you're going to see her or me and Dr. Christie has to figure out what we're going to do about all the lies and all the scandal and all the crazy things that are finally catching up to her. So it's going to be an exciting ride. Thank you. And I think lastly that we have online is, is but very strong and dynamic is Mr. Keith Robinson. So Mr. Robinson, tell us a little bit about your character and what we expect to see in the new season. Yes, ma'am. Um, I think the first season you saw um, Miles Calloway trying to uh, get his career and his life on track, and uh, <clears throat> the second season opens up with him finally getting a breakthrough career-wise and trying to get it on good footing with his wife. But he's, he's still, uh, I think the, the more he tries to walk it straight and narrow, the, the, the harder it is for him. He's kind of a slave to his own habits and his own instincts, so he's kind of stuck in the middle of a, of a love triangle that uh, – is bigger than him that he's having trouble overcoming. So that kind of sends him, sends him into a further downward spiral and leaves a lot of bodies in, in waste at the same time. So it's kind of a quite a roller coaster ride to see what happens to Miles and, and, and the love of his life. Mm-hmm. Ooh, good boy, this is sounding, this is sounding good. Um, we're going to open up in a second. Ricardo, um, uh, one last word before we uh, go to the press. Yeah, definitely, and you know we have some, um, some some announcements to make real quick before we get into it. So the new season of uh, the new season two episodes of Saints and Sinners will premiere every Sunday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. 
uh, and Pacific on Bounce starting this Sunday, March 5th. Um, and you can please, you know, that, let, let people know to visit BounceTV.com to find the channel in the area. Um, in addition to that, Sanction Centers can also be seen on mobile devices and desktop computers on Bounce TV's new subscription video on demand service, Brown Sugar. Uh, one, season one is available now for streaming, um, and season two episodes will be available every Monday. So you can please direct everyone to visit brownsugar.com to get the service. Um, so that's, that's new for this season. That's great. That's good information. All right, so um, I'm going to call Demetria. Are you on the line? It shows she's on the line. But anyway, so operator? Yes. Yes, we're going to open up to the press um, and uh, let them know that um, if they have any questions for Vanessa Bell Calloway or Christian Keys, uh, could they make sure they do, you know, ask those now because they're both going to be leaving uh, leaving before the call is completed. Okay. Um, well, you you just told them. <laughs> okay. All right. All but right. if you okay. if you have a question, uh, press star one on your touchstone phone. If you wish to be removed from the question queue, press the pound sign or the hash key. If you're using a speakerphone, you may need to pick up the handset first before pressing the numbers. Also, we'd like to ask so that everyone will get a chance to answer, get their questions answered. That you limit your question to one. Uh, question, and if you have a follow-up or you have another question, please get back into the queue to ask that question. Thank you. Our first, our first question is from uh, Nye McGee. Hi, yes, hi. This is Nye McGee with EURweb.com. Good morning. My question is for Vanessa. Vanessa, um, I'm curious to know, you know, you're playing such a powerful ruthless character on this show and I watched the uh, premiere episode for this season and it just blew me away what goes on so I'm wondering what is it like playing such a a because normally we you know we see so many female characters we don't see so many strong female characters on you know tel- drama series they're usually victims or you know weak in some way what is it like playing such a ruthless strong female character and where does she rank in terms of your most profound roles to date well it's a lot of fun playing somebody ruthless and powerful because my own life is not that great it's not that interesting <laughs> so i get to kind of live on a lot of fantasy and lady ella you know like i always said they're gonna pay somebody to be the bitch might as well be me um and she <laughs> ranks Rank very high, you know, in my characters that I've done because because of the freedom I excuse me uh, because of the freedom that I get to have with her, uh, it's, it's just a lot of fun. You know, there's a lot of people that you can pull from, a lot of situations that you could pull from, a lot of things in the past that you can pull from, and your imagination you could pull from. If I was able to do X, Y, Z, how would I handle it? So it is a lot of fun uh, to be, you know, a powerful woman on television right now, especially a powerful black woman that is really controlling things, having her way, getting her say, and just kind of running the show. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's awesome. Thank you. Next question. Our next question from Willie Mae McIver. Um, hi. Thank you all so much for taking my call. Uh, my question is for uh, Christian uh, Keys. Christian, in your character, um, you're, you're kind of this season going back and forth between the role of a saint and the role of a sinner with kind of like the devil on one side of your shoulder and, and um, God on the other side. How how is it challenging for you to have to kind of go back and forth in your head about what the character is going to do each each episode? Um, to be honest, it, it, it makes it more interesting. It makes it more fun. Um, you know, we were talking about it at the end of last season, and Ricardo and the writers, they said they were going to inspire. They said they were going to, you know, cut Levi loose a little bit and, and expose some of the, you know, some of the darker sides and, um, you know, some of the center side. So I, I think the I think the, the fun part of it is, is just that they did that, you know, and it's the conflict between wanting to, you know, do the right thing, but then sometimes you you can't. You know, you got to do what feels right to you, even though it may be wrong. And on TV and in the movies, you get to get away with that. You can do I can do stuff that I couldn't do, you know, walking down the street. Um, you know, that I wouldn't do in real life to people. 
So I, I enjoy it. I don't, I don't think it's it's as difficult as one might think. Uh, I think, you know, when the good writing is there, it, it makes my job that much easier. So and that's what they've done. Great, great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Next question. Next question is from Sylvia. Hi, good evening. This is Sylvia from Prestige Celebrity Magazine. And this question is for Ms. Um, Vanessa Bell Calloway. Now that you, you know, you're Lady Ella, this very proud, very strict to whatever you want to do type of character, is there ever going to be a breaking point in your character? And, and who do you feel can break that character? Because you're so headstrong. So, you know, is there ever going to be that breaking point that brings uh, up that emotional side of you? You know, she has a lot of emotion, and you'll see that this this uh, season because she some things are revealed to her that, and she has to face some of her past, which um, I get to explore in the episode that I directed, episode seven. I, a lot of that stuff is really getting revealed there. So um, she does have a lot of emotion. I mean, she is human. There are things that affect her, her past and the present. And, and you know, she knows that she's kind of doing dirty work, and, I mean, you, you do what you need to do. To do, but also you have a conscience about it. As far as anybody breaking her, I, I think that you know your children, being a mother and myself, for real, as two daughters, that's always a very vulnerable part for any woman. Your children can, can get to you like nobody else. But and honestly, I hope she doesn't really break. I think it's nice to see a woman who can deliver just like a man. We don't see strong men on TV breaking and and falling to the wayside just because, you know, of their strength or their their demons. So she, she has signed off for what she wants. She's very clear about the choices she's made, and she's willing to take the consequences for them. So if you're going to be powerful, if you're going to be mean and evil, you have to really look the devil in his face, make an agreement with them, and be okay with the uh, resolve and with the, um, uh, the end result. And I think Lady Ella has done that, and I think she's going to be okay with it. Hey, thank you. That was good. All right, next question. Yes, before we go to the next question, I remind everyone to press star one on your phone if you do have a question. Our next question from Susan Jones. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, how are you guys doing? I am so grateful to be on this call, and thank you. And I absolutely, absolutely love, love, love Saints and Sinners. It is a fantastic show. I am so excited about it. Uh, so my question is... Um, uh, I'm going to take a question from from um, from one of the lists here. Can you tell me about any of your any other upcoming projects that you guys might have that's coming up? Vanessa, you take that first. Oh, okay. Well, um, I'm recurring on uh, Survivor's Remorse right now, so I'll be a, a couple episodes in their in their new season coming up, and um, yeah, that's really pretty much right now what I have going on. Um, of course, we featured that we just did one uh, that Chris and I are in this one for the Pan African Film Festival, Preacher's Son. So that I think is going to be released on possibly Netflix. I, I'm understanding maybe that's going to be released soon. Um, yeah. Is it Netflix, Christian? I think that's what they I, said. I believe. I believe so, Miss Vanessa. I think. I think that's the direction they're leaning on, and that'll be within the next. That'll probably be while the series, the season is airing. So. Which would be good. And y'all got to see Miss Vanessa Bell Calloway in there because she, she ain't going to toot her own horn. Damn it, I'm going to toot it. Um, the, her role <laughs> is... Was, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you, Christian. I'm with you too, baby. Yeah. You gotta, yeah, Christian the movie too. Yeah. No, yeah, no, Vanessa. <laughs> Vanessa is going to blow everybody away, Christian. Tell them. Yeah, she's she going to knock your damn socks off. So just get ready. Um, as always. But, I mean, it's a different... You, you've never seen her in this kind of this kind of role and she murders it. So... Well, we all we all did a very good job, and so the three of us are in uh, the preacher's son that's coming out, and and uh, uh, Cliff is the preacher, and Chris is yeah. the son. So there you have yeah. it. <laughs> and but uh, yeah, so and I'm very excited that I uh, directed episode seven of Saints and Sinners, so I'm looking forward to that. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be leaving this call shortly after you ask your questions because I'm in, <laughs> I'm in Atlanta, I'm in Atlanta editing, and I got to get back to work. Um, all right, well, we're glad you're here because we got all these press people on and they want to hear from you. You know what? Can we, um, because we have such a shorter time, can we ask the? Uh, we can come back to that for anybody else. But can we ask the next question of people? Anything that's for Vanessa or, 
a Christian and because I want to be able for everybody else to start talking about other things as well. So um, can we have the next question? <clears throat> next question from Chernobyl. Uh, yes, hi. This is Chernobyl with Fusions Magazine and TV. And this uh, question is for Vanessa. Um, what do you find most interesting about your character's role and what part of the character do you feel is most like you in real life? Well, I think the one that's most like me in real life is the, the woman that's strong. I know that I'm a very strong person. I can I can take a lot in real life, you know, ups and downs. Um, you know, the disappointments in life, I just roll through them as Vanessa. And Lady Ella, Lady Ella is a planner, uh, much like I am. I, I always i am very planned. I have everything, my days, my weeks, my months, my life planned out. And I think Ellie, uh, Lady Ella does that too. And uh, once again, the thing that I like most about her is just her strength and her power and the fact that she's not afraid. I'm so happy for a role like this because so often we only see men in roles like this and we don't get a chance to see women stand up to other men and other women without being afraid, without being the little woman that goes and cries and, you know, in the corner or just being the first lady in the church with hats and a fan. This is the first lady, but she's a different kind of first lady. Thank Perfect. you so much, Vanessa. Thank you. And one second, um, Demetria McKinney, uh, she's on the line now. She's one of the characters. She plays the wife of um, Miles. Uh, so she's, and I believe she's preparing for the arrival of her first child. But anyway, uh, there we there we go. So, Demetria, are you on the line? I was just told she was on the line. Okay. Yeah, operator, can you check? Because I think she said she couldn't hear. So can somebody check? And we can ask, yes. the, next, we can ask the next question. Thank you. Uh, next question from Humility. Hi, this is Humility um, of MixedMedia.Reviews. And my question is for Vanessa. Um, Vanessa, you mentioned earlier about you know, really enjoying the opportunity to, to play that strong woman. But I also, and you do a, a fantastic job, but I also would like to know what, if, what, if any, are there any positive, vulnerable sides of your character, Lady Ella? Yes, Lady Ella is very vulnerable, as I said before, when it comes to her children. And without giving a lot away, she, um, uh, her past is uh, brought back to her future, um, her present and her future in this season and she becomes very vulnerable because she she deals with um you know we all know that she had a son with um clifton's character rex because we meet him at the end of episode or season one the last episode uh she finds out that her son is still alive and that cliff that rex knows where he is so she has to deal with all that this season you know finding him deciding if she's gonna let him know she's a mother so that you know like any mother any woman what Lady Ella has in common, no matter how strong she is, is the love of her children, and that could be the one thing that hurts. That's her Achilles heel is her children. Very good. Thank you so much, Vanessa. That's great. Next question, please. Question from D. Nice. Yes, thanks for uh, being here to the cast and crew and for the writers. You guys have done a great uh, piece of work here. And my question, uh, Vanessa, is, they say art imitates life, but I'm wondering sometimes life imitates art because I have never, I have yet to see a church that just blows up like what I see, which you guys have brought to the stage. And uh, the characters and the way you bring them together are so, with yours, Vanilla, is so elegant, but yet still you've got vulnerability, but yet still you've got that, that fragment in there that doesn't allow you to crack because you've got to be that strong essence. Now, in your uh, church uh, perspective of growing up, uh, was there something you had to pull on? I know you're a conservative actress and you're a great actress, but what did you really have to pull on to be able to pull out so much strength uh, in the church setting, so to speak? Well, I was raised Catholic, so I don't have this experience that Lady ever has. I didn't go to a Baptist church growing up. And as far as pulling on I mean, you know, we, we all have a lot of examples in our real life. My mother was a very strong woman. She had three jobs sometimes. Um, so I watched my mother. I watched other women that I knew. Plus, I just from my own experiences. Plus, I take from what if, if I could, how would I? 
And, you know, that's, that's a great part of to be able to say, if I could do this, if I was this person, how would I handle it? So I, I can't really say that I, like I had to study somebody because I didn't. I was just able to kind of jump. I got it. When I read it, I got it. I understood Lady Ella. I got it, and I just ran with it. And you did a good job of running. Thank you very much for being here. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Nice question. Uh, next question, please. Question from Cheryl Branch. Okay. Hi, Hi Cheryl. My name, Question. My name is Teresa Branch, and I'm TV. And first, I would like to say happy birthday to Vanessa Bell Calloway. I know you have a birthday coming up this month, so happy. I do. I have a birthday in, in 18 days. Thank you. Okay. And my question is to Jasmine, um, to Jasmine Burke. What is it um, that? What is the one thing that you would like um, for the viewers uh, to take away from your character this season, or to see from your character this season? Somebody put it on hold, and we can, we got a lot of dis- disruption. Just put it on mute, brother. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Jasmine, that's a question for you. <laughs> Sorry, I was muted. Okay. Can you repeat that? What is the one thing that you would like for the viewers to see this season from your character or to take away from your character this season? Um, what happens when you don't fix your brokenness? I really want people to see that, um, that when you don't take time to just sit down and figure out what's really going on with you, what's really going on in your head space, um, the different paths that you can go down and the different choices that you can make, um, that can change your life. And um, so I really hope people take that away from um, Dr. Christie's experience this and thank you, Dennis. Your, your phone is breaking up a little bit, so wherever you are. Uh, see there, see there Hello, can you hear me better now? Yeah, just repeat that last line. Oh, I was just saying that I hope this season um, when people watch Saints and Sinners that they take away from Dr. Christie um, just when you don't take the time to sit down and think about what's going on in your head space and just really dissect your life and try to get some healing, um, the different destructive paths that people can go down and the different turns that they can take that they didn't expect um, from just not taking a moment to say, breathe what is going on with me and let me try to get some solutions so um it's a dark path that dr christie goes down this season um an interesting path a scary path and um yeah i'm just really excited to be able to play such a complex young woman and um be successful but also have all this baggage that comes along with it and show that flawed people can Find some redemption somewhere. So that's what I hope people will take away from my character this season. Great. Thank you so much. And uh, next question, please. Next question is from Hayward. Go ahead, Hayward. Hey, this is Latoya. I'm with Inside Atlanta. My question is for Clifton Powell. Um, with you being like a legend in this industry and playing an array of roles, uh, what was one of the biggest challenge um, challenges with this particular role? Um, you know, the biggest biggest challenge is um, making sure that Rex is multidimensional. And I think the writers have conquered that this season. And, and making Rex, you know, you know, I kind of pattern Rex after – um, some of those characters that we see in The Godfather, who, you know, they in church, they 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 have a family, they they you know go to PTA meetings, but they're tough guys. So, you know, as we see the seasons, you know, season two and season three, four and five, um, thanks to you all, you know, we'll see Rex open up and 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 hopefully, um, you know, continue to be multidimensional and maybe you know make some transitions in his life. So. That's that's fun for me because you know I mean I play a lot of tough guys but you know um, you know it's harder for me to play a tough guy like Rex because I'm not internally anything like Rex you know so it's always a challenge as an actor to find those levels to make him believable. Thank you. Um, so Miss uh, Vanessa Bell Calloway will have to go back into editing. So uh, Vanessa, will you 
And will you can you give your last words? Uh, uh, you'd like to tell the media some. Uh, some yes, yeah, so I would like to I like to thank the media because you are our biggest supporter, and without you, it's hard to get the word out to our audience. And we are very proud that we have had over a million point five viewers last year, and we know that it's gonna the numbers will grow this year, especially with the extra outlets that we have. And with the word of mouth and the show, the great this season is going to be very good. So I'd like to thank you all for taking the time to interview us and writing about us, sharing our stories. And uh, just thank you. It's going to be a good season. I'm very excited about it. I'm very proud and, and just extremely happy to be Lady Ella. It's a, it's a great gig, as we say. Great character, great gig, great people that I get a chance to work with. So thank you very much. And episode seven, I direct. So get a chance to make sure you know you'll be hearing about that. But I got to get back to work. So thank you, everybody, and have a blessed week, Thank you, Bob Vanessa. Bye bye. All right, Julia. Right, uh, I think Demetria is on now. Oh, Demetria. Okay, so Demetria is on, and um, we'll have her. I'll throw a question to you um, later. And before we get off the line, Demetria, but thank you. I'm glad. I'm glad you're here. Uh, your character is a great character on the show, and um, I will talk about that in a minute. Uh, next ca- question, though, please. We can move to the next question. And you were going to have me say my goodbye here soon because i got to disappear in a second, oh, please. Oh, okay. So does anybody, does anybody have one last question for Christian Key? Uh, please raise your hand real quick virtually. And then uh, he'll have to uh, go to as well. So, operator, can you get that? Uh, can you make sure that person can ask that question? Operator. Hmm. Hello. Yes, I'm afraid I can't tell who has a question right. specifically. It's all right. This is the next question. Okay. Tanika Marsha. Hi, Sammy. How are you? We're Hello. fine. Yeah. Question. Um, my question is, my name is Tamika Marshall, and my question is uh, directed to either of the cast members. Uh, Bonks is such a pillar for African-American viewers and actors in over 94 million total. But it has, but it was same for famous cast who broke the viewing records for the network. I want to know what's that feeling like knowing that you will be in the history books for Bonks for this show? Oh, that's good. Uh, I think a couple people. Well, Carlo, you want to answer that real quick? I think she was directing that towards the cast. I would love to hear, you know, the okay. cast respond to that. Christian, <laughs> Christian, can you can you answer that? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going, to, uh, I guess, deflect to one of the other cast members that haven't really had a chance to say anything. Um, but um, I mean, it's it's amazing. Um, it's just it's indicative of the work that the producers and writers have put into. Uh, setting up the scenarios, setting up the, the episodes and the show itself, and then the, the fanfare. I mean, they love it, and, you know, we interact with them as much and as heavily as we can in regards to live tweeting, in regards to posting little snippets and clips and teaser trailers and things like that. And so when all of that perfect storm comes together and then the media is constantly helping us get the word out about this great show that we're privileged to be a part of, you know, all that comes together and we get the results that, that we got. So it's an awesome feeling. Um, and then, you know, not being funny or, or uh, presumptuous, but I'm certain we're going to be, you know, we may break some records this season, especially with the special guests, you know, the guest stars and the people that they've added, as well as the development of the characters that are already there. Like Miles' character grows, Christie's grows, Levi, my character grows, Lady Vanessa, um, uh, Miss Ellis, you know, her character grows, Rex you know, develops, and they made sure to make it impossible not to tune in and, to be honest, I'd watch this show if I wasn't on it. So we just thank the fans. Well, thank you, and thank you for taking the time. I know you have to leave, too, but thank you, Christian, so much. And any last words you want to say? Uh, nothing, just grateful. I'm grateful to still work with these, these talented bunch of misfits. Can somebody get off with somebody talking? Okay. Go no, ahead. I'm on speaker, I think. Um, I was just saying I'm, I'm thankful to work with this talented bunch of misfits. Um, but, you know, the cast that I work with, um, it's a privilege. And I think I think people are going to love the new season, and I can't wait to see it because I didn't see everybody else's scenes. I only really got to see mine, so I can't wait to watch the episode to see what's going on with all the other characters. But I think the fans are definitely in for a treat. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time. I appreciate you. Not a problem. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Clifton, would you want to answer that question too? Since that's a question I think uh, – 
about the history book, being in history book for breaking the records of viewership with Bounce TV. Clifton. I feel, I'm here. Um, you know, I, I'm just honored. You know, I've, I've done a lot of work over the years, and I said it the first season. If I was on NBC, ABC, or CBS, I wouldn't be allowed to play this kind of dark character and be allowed to grow and find other levels because, you know, my my uh, experience has been that it would be too threatening. And, you know, I'm just so grateful to have found a home at Bounce uh, with the wonderful producers that we have, the writers, the crazy fun cast that we have. And it's almost like going to work with family every day. Everybody is so cool and we... We all try to come and bring 100%, and we try to be respectful and, and loving, and, 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 and that stems from the producers and the writers all the way down, uh, Swirl and everybody else, and Bounce TV. So I'm, I'm, I'm grateful at this point in my life, you know, um, to be on a wonderful show and, and, and to make history. I think, you know, you know African-American, black, Latino, Asian, white would be uh, uh, remiss if they did not watch this show. This, this is history in the making. And I'm just glad to be a part of it. Perfect, perfect. Does anybody else want to ask that question, or we can go to the next question? Hi, uh, okay. Hi this is Jasmine. How? Go hello? Ahead. Go ahead, Jasmine. I was just going to say it's just absolutely amazing, I mean, to think to – be able to break ground um, with Bounce Television, and um, and but the most rewarding, the hugest reward I can say is meeting our viewers when I'm out and about, and people come up to me and they are so, I mean, when people love Saints and Sinners, they really love it. They are super fans. Like people who tune into Saints and Sinners are not lukewarm. They are like all the way hot for the show and so their excitement they're like oh my gosh you're on Saints and Sinners oh my gosh Saints and Sinners is my show oh my gosh I'm setting my DVR right now so you know being able to break the records and be in the history books is amazing it's a blessing but meeting our actual viewers face to face that is the hugest reward and blessing that has come out of this experience um and i know we all feel the same way we're really thankful to our viewers and fans that um support us it's incredible great that is true thank you thank you thank you uh just a reminder that you know we still have some very strong exciting cast members still on the line we have keith robinson who plays miles uh, Callaway, uh, which is uh, a very strong character. You watch last week. He had a lot of great, great scenes. Uh, we have Jasmine, you just heard Burke, same thing. Uh, and also Dem- Demetria. Is she? Oh, good. Hi, I've been here. Everybody's been giving awesome responses. I don't know why y'all couldn't hear me. Oh, good. Just, um, you know what, um, won't you just give a quick overview of your character? My name is Lisa McKinney. I play the role of Miss Tamara Austin. I am married to that Cinna Cinna man, uh, Miles Calloway. And in my opinion, I think that Tamara is kind of the heart of, of the church, between the church and the sinners. Um, you know, she shows the love, the compassion. She shows the faith and love and family that, that is there. But you know, that's also not to be taken as a weakness. And I think that she shows that love is, is powerful, but it can also be um, twisted if pushed too far. So I love the fact that in season two, guys, everybody gets to experience a little bit more of what happens when you cross that line, that very thin line between love and hate. Great. That's perfect. And then, Mr. of course, Mr. Chip Clifton Powell. So we have some strong characters on the line now. So let's go. And then Ty Scott, still on the creator, and Ricardo Handy, the executive producer. So, um, operator, can you next question? Next question from Simon Applebaum. Yes, hi. It's Simon Applebaum from Tomorrow Be Televised. That's the promo about television, uh, Mondays and Fridays on Blog Talk Radio. And I wanted to give the, the creator, uh, Kai and Carlos, the executive producer, back into the conversation. Uh, given that this year, this past year, we have seen a boom in African American drama series like Underground, Greenleaf, Queen Sugar, more recently The Quad, uh, plus movies like Dear White People, Birth of a Nation, of course, Moonlight that just won the Academy Award this past Monday morning. Uh, have you tried to raise the bar creatively on your series? Have you tried to put in some social issues in, 
you go in a direction with, with the characters or the plots that uh, you might not have thought about had it not been for the fact that we're now seeing more and more series on the air dealing with African-American themes? Great question. Well, um, go ahead. Yeah, well, I, I think that um, we've always tried to raise a narrative of what is happening in stories and African-American stories and just human stories. So we were trying to touch on an area in our community that doesn't often have a light shined on it. It's, it's, it's the, the church is the, is the heartbeat of the African-American community. It has been for centuries. So we were just shining a light on an area of commune among, um, among African-Americans that just hadn't been explored before. And so w- while doing that, we just were able to touch on this, like I said, the human side of characters and kind of the underbelly of what goes on and this, this symbol of greatness that is the church. And although you're supposed to be having an, um, a fresh line of, of morale, that you often, you know, struggle with that. So um, there are some issues that we're tackling this season that are a little subtly touch on what's going on in our community, but it was more important for us to explore the level of these characters um, that people are so invested in and just raising the bar as far as storytelling than um, trying to be effective politically. Great. Ricardo, could you kind of add on to that? Yeah, definitely. I, I think just from a network perspective, you know, we are unique in the way that we, we specifically are servicing, you know, what the African-American audience in, it wants to see, uh, and we'll continue to do that. Um, whether, whether, you know, these other networks continue to do that, um, you know, that, that comes and goes, but we'll be consistent in servicing what's, what's going on in the community. And so, you know, that's why we were the first to come you know, with the drama in, set in the church. Um, and it's important to us that we continue to kind of just listen to our audience and, and be, uh, you know, uh, in the conversation with what's important in the community. Um, with, with that said, you know, of course, there's a lot of things um, that are out there that, uh, that deal with African-American experience, but the, the African-American experience is so broad and vast, just like the human experience, you know, just as vast as the human experience, so that we'll never run out of, uh, material or, 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 or fresh stories, you know, because, we, you know, it's infinite. Um, so I, the more the merrier is what I say, the more the merrier. Well, well, thank you both very much. We want to have both of you on our show, and I hope we can make that happen in the next couple of weeks. So uh, thanks again. And all the best with the uh, premiere on Sunday. Thank you, Simon. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Uh, next question, operator. Next question from Parchi Smith. Go ahead. Yes. Um, Yes, my question is uh, probably for Ty. Um, Scott, what type of um, special artist, gospel, or any artist you're going to be having on the show that you can reveal? Oh, um, you know what? Uh, Carlo, I think that's a question for you. Um, as far as our music, Carlo is the person that is the quintessential expert on that on show. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you. So this season um, you'll hear music from Keith Robinson. You'll hear music from... Uh, Kiki Wyatt, uh, you'll hear music from Tank, um, and we we really um, you know gave some of our our uh, you know music more instead of having cameos so much we kind of made them more characters and part of the show. So you know you'll see Tank in a couple of episodes. You'll see Kiki Wyatt playing the the wife of the pastor. You know, and so these won't be characters that kind of roll through for for a quick cameo. They're really uh, part of the world uh, and the backstory of, of our main characters. And, and honestly, um, Keith Robinson has a really excellent, excellent single um, that he performs in episode four. Um, so we have some really great music moments still this year as well. You know, can you also, uh, uh, Ricardo, kind of expand on that and maybe some of the characters that may not be singing, but some of the other characters like Candy and can you kind of talk yeah, about that? Yeah, definitely. So, so, um, You'll also be seeing Candy Burris um, play uh, in a couple of uh, a couple of episodes um, as a colleague of uh, Dr. Christy Johnson, um, and then you'll and then you'll also obviously we saw David Banner playing um, the the pastor of the church, uh, Pastor Green. Uh, Emilio Riviera um, joins the cast, um, 
and uh, he does an excellent job this season. I mean, him and uh, him and Clifton have some great moments together. Um, and uh, also Lisa Arendelle uh, joins the cast as the prosecutor, um, um, and she's one of uh, Lady Ella's foes um, during this season. Um, Ty, who am I forgetting anybody else? Uh, Trey. Emilio, Emilio. Yeah, no, you said Emilio, yeah. I think oh, you said Emilio? Oh, yeah, he's a beast. <laughs> yeah, he's a beast. Uh, yeah, if, you, if you're not familiar, you definitely uh, definitely Google and you, you've seen him uh, tons, and he's an excellent uh, addition to the cast. Um, Gary, you know. Carly, Carly, and Trey. Yeah, and then Car- Carly Red, you know, returns as uh, as um, as uh, the the wife of Jabari. Um, she has her role expanded this season. You know, as you see them go through, you know, their struggles. Um, and you know, Trey, Trey Cheney. And Trey Cheney again. He joins the cast as well. Uh, he was in uh, those both. They were both were in last season, but Trey Cheney plays the yeah. of of Rex and uh, and, and Lady Ella. Yeah. Um, okay, I think we have everybody to brought up. So next question, please. Thank you so much, Ricardo and, and Ty. Um, yeah. Next question, operator. Next, next question is from Monica Debs. Hello. Go ahead with your question, Monica. Hey, how are y'all doing today? Well, this is Monica Debs from Big Mouth Radio, and I had a question for the creator. I wanted to know, like, how do you think the viewers are going to react to this season's episodes? Well, I hope they enjoy them. I hope that we have raised the bar. I noticed last season it was it was very thrilling to get the feedback from the fans about what they enjoyed in the episodes. And so I noticed that our audiences are very sophisticated. And so I didn't want to let them down as far as we came up with. Uh, you know, we wanted to give them some of the things they were used to and some things new. So I'm hoping when they watch the episodes, they'll realize that and that we always want to give them something entertaining. Okay. And, and another, do you think, like, some of the content that you guys use is, like, revealing some truth, you know, within the church, you know, in the pastors? I, I, I mean, because this is a really, really, really deep series y'all got going on this 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 season well you know i was it, it, it definitely makes you uh, think about your psyche and dig into that when you're, you're it's some of the things we're exploring um i i don't think it definitely does any reveals on the church i just think it does reveals on these characters you know what i mean this is not a church show this is a show that, that happens to happen in the church so right. um so it, it, you're seeing these characters that gather in this one area. You're seeing what happens in their lives, you know, in the confines of that. And yeah. so I think it's just very interesting to see those layers, you know, which is the fa- not like the face they put on. And, and I'll, I'll tack on to what um, Ty just said because I think it is a lot of things that happen with human beings. You know, human beings make these choices, um, have these crimes they commit, sins they commit against their brothers and sisters, et cetera. But it's always been taboo to kind of show those human qualities on certain individuals that are involved in certain positions in life, certain stations in life, like a pastor or like a first lady. But but they're not immune to to sin or, and evil or or mistakes, you know. And so we're just showing that these characters' human side. They just happen to be, you know, in a space that 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 not many people have touched before in this way. Right, right. Thank I you. love it. You guys. The good work. Oh, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Next, uh, thank next you. question. Brad Willis. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks so much for the call. I want to ask you guys. I want to tell you guys. First of all, my my father, my stepfather, who is a, a second generation pastor, shocked me last season when he told me that your show was his favorite show on television. Um, do you Hello, have? Other- yeah, do y'all have other responses like that from people within the church that actually like the show? They don't take anything negative from it. They actually like it. Of course, sure. oh, of yeah. course. I think I think the thing that that again, like we just kind of stated, you know, just because something's new and it hasn't been talked about before, 
uh, in this way in the community are, are you know kind of taboo to talk about. It, it doesn't mean it doesn't happen, and it doesn't mean people don't talk about it. You know, these are the kind of things that you know our folks been talking about for years. You know, past it's identifiable. Years, you know, yeah, it's, it's not like it doesn't happen. It just, it just we just haven't seen it and watched it collectively. And now, you know, a lot of times folks are just kind of looking at each other to see if there's permission, if they have permission to say it's it's cool. You know, right? Yeah, right. There are churches yeah, that have. So. Churches that have watch watch groups, especially the women's uh, ministry, that have gone and they all come and watch the show. So it's very much watched in the church. Really? Oh, that's fantastic. All right. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you so much. Next question. Next question from Stephanie Ahorna. Hello? Yes. Uh, hi. How are you, Cynthia Ahorna? Okay. Yes. How are you, Cynthia? Okay. Hi. Um, this question is for anyone that would like to jump in. Um, right now we're seeing the emergence of a lot of really good um, shows that feature African-American um, characters. And can you all speak to the fact that um, whoever would like to answer what it's like knowing that um, the landscape has finally started changing in television? Um, I, it, this is Demetria. Um, I think it's a beautiful thing. We've always had the story to tell, and nobody comes in like us. Uh, and, 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 okay. Hello? I'm here, but I don't think Demetria is. No, Dim- Dita, you broke up a little bit. You there? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, well, you broke up. Can you start again and answer that question? I think she's off. Somebody else watching Get It Together, can somebody else kind of uh, take on that question? That's a good one, Cynthia. Yeah, I think we kind of touched on this earlier, and I, I, I hear where Demetri was going with it, with, uh, you know, just uh, the fact that, you know, it's always great to hear and and and, and see more of us, you know, on, on television um, and in movies. Um, but I would actually just like to take that time to underscore the importance of having our own networks and our own media outlets, which is, you know, what Bounce TV is providing because, you know, 10 years from now, five years from now, three years from now, when the cycle changes and something else is, is cool or hot in the pop culture, you know, we'll still be here servicing African Americans uh, consistently. And that's, and that's kind of, you know, what, what, uh, what Bounce TV came in the game to provide and uh, and when when the tide if the tide shifts, we'll still be here providing it. Great, thank you so much. That was an excellent answer. And Demetrius was good too. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Who's, oh, uh, Cliff, can you want to answer? Uh, this is Keith Robinson. I, okay. I want to okay. try. Can you hear me? Yeah, I want to piggyback off of what Carla and uh, Demetrius said. Kind of, it, it does go in cycles, and you know, because ten years ago in, in the business, it was, it is you kind of from this from that point on to this point. You can definitely see a shift with more opportunities and the, and the doors opening up, and, and our, our stories are being able to be told. So it's, it's really it's good to be a part of the wave of what's going on because you do see it changing slowly but surely. You're correct. All those answers are great. Thank you so much. Uh, and thank you, Cynthia. Uh, next mm-hmm. question. Next question from Jasmine. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Um, this is Jasmine with the Diva Files. And, of course, my, my question is for my favorite, and she already knows who she is. Um, and I know she's laughing because she knows who she is. We have a wonderful relationship, Ms. McKinney, and you know I had to ask a question for you. So you play a variety of characters. You, you play Janine and you play, you're, you're currently playing Miss Whitney Houston, and you, you play this character on Saints and Sinners. Can you tell me, you know, what type of space do you go into to get into these characters, and how do they really relate to you as a, as a woman and, and who you are? Demetria? I think we lost Demetria again. Oh, that was such a good question. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. She, she, she's having some phone trouble, so she is. Yeah, uh, we are, that was such a good question. 
Um, so let's go to the next one, and she's bounced back on. We'll, we'll go back to your question, uh, Jasmine. Next okay, question. that's on me. Next question. Next question from Willie Mae McIver. Uh, yes, my question is for Ty and for um, Ricardo. Um, the the writing for the show is just great. It, it, it's so great, and the the all the the talent executed so well. I was wondering, is there any um, leeway for them to add it because the the way that they come up with the the scripts, the way they they articulate them, it just seemed like they might have to put in their own little bits and pieces, or is that just straight copy? <laughs> well, we definitely you know take a lot of time to share, to share um, in developing them and developing the characters, but I do give a, a little wiggle room if I feel like any addition authenticates the characters. You know what I mean? You want every character to have their own voice. And you want every character to speak differently from the next. You want them all to sound differently. So if there's something that I hear, you know, because sometimes writers, um, sorry, actors really are into their craft, and they might say something that I feel like meshes. So I, I do allow that creative license. But we, we um, you know, that's like a, you know, a 90 10 type of thing. But it, it, you know, you can see that it does work out. You know, this all is a collaborative effort. So. Yeah, it is. It flows really well. So kudos to you all on that writing. Thank you, Thank you so much, Willie Mae. I want to ask a quick question. Keith, um, I know you've been a heart of the music, and your character has been uh, a strong character as well. We talked about there was going to be some music this, this season from you. Um, do you take some of the music and the, the songs that you write, and it kind of directs it towards this particular series for Saints and Sinners, or how do you create your music? Because you, you have wonderful music. I love what you had on last last year. Can you kind of talk a little bit about your music and, and part of, as part of the show? Yeah, um, that's the great thing about the character, because he does kind of, I get a chance to express myself you know, musically. I think um, last year we did, we, we did a couple songs off the soundtrack, and I think just for me, as far as creating, that kind of informs my character on both sides. So I do kind of Creative in my own life as a musician, kind of for my day to day, drawing from characters and, and, and vice versa. So uh, I think this season is great because I get a chance to, to use one of my songs off my new album uh, coming out this month. And I think that's what's great about with Carlo and Ty and, and all the people that bounce that they allow us to, they play to our strong points, which is which is definitely uh, something that helps me have Miles, gives Miles a lot more depth and, and layers. So I'm having a great time doing it. Perfect. We can't wait to hear some of your music this this season. I know it's going to be great. Um, we have a couple more questions, and then we'll 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 kind of round it out, and everybody can can give their last the last words. Um, next question, operator. Next question. Next question from D Nice. Okay. Okay. Yes. Uh, this, uh, this is D Nice Gospel Jazz Connection. Clifton. Uh, I followed your career, and uh, the women that uh, I work with, you're the one that they put up that they love to hate. And uh, when I see your character, and I've watched you through uh, season one, you hit a point to where you would say that there's a conscious there, but you quickly have been able to uh, override that and stay in character as that uh, uh, godfather type scenario you're talking about. Now, how true to life? I know you, you know, you said that there's different parts of you. How true to life is that? Uh, to be able to reach down, and no matter what the vulnerabilities come at you, you still can stay in character of being that cold-blooded monster. It's, it's all, it's, it's, you know, one, one of the things that people have to do is, you know, I play probably more good guys than bad guys. You know, I played Dr. Mm-hmm. King in the movie. I played, yep. you know, doctors, lawyers. I played a pastor in the Under Shepherd, um, mm-hmm. you know, the gospel. You know, uh, I played cops. I played doctors. You know, it's all training. It's just, you know, you know, bad guys are easy to play because they're usually, for the most part, you know, especially we've seen in African-American uh, film, one-dimensional, you know. Mm-hmm. And Bounce, Bounce is, you know, season two, we'll see. You know, we have some very incredible producers who are smart, who are educated, who understand, you know, African-American life and understand life. And, and they know how to draw this character. You know, this guy starts out really tough, um, mm. but, you know, he's going to grow season two. We'll see. You know, and my job as an actor is to capture the emotion 
and that's all training, you know, you know, to be able to morph from Martin Luther King to Pinky to dead presidents to Ray, right. that's all just training is and, and nothing more than that. I'm a character actor and I play characters, you know, and when I play a tough guy like Rex, I, I make sure he's authentic and, you know, the producers have allowed me, you know, sometimes my language gets a little spicy on the set and, you know, we found ways to keep it spicy, but not necessarily use, you know, all the words, but Ty and, and Ricardo and Elizabeth and have allowed me to, you know, make this guy real because we all grew up with guys like this in our neighborhood, you know, um, um, you know, when we watch, you know, the Godfather, we see human characters who are flawed. And I basically, you know, a lot of my foundation is in the Stanislavski system of acting, but I also watch everything. I watch gangster movies, you know, and I, you know, I, I want to continue to have Rex grow, you know, even if he makes a transition at some point, you know, season three, four, five, to make sure that when he's, when he's, when he's got to be exactly where he needs to be. And, and it's training and it's the writing and it's, and the faith that they have in us as actors to, to, to bring what's real. Right. Man, Thank you're doing you. a good job, man. Keep doing what you're doing. We love it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. The last question, and then like I said, we're going to do a, a, a roundup of questions. I mean, a roundup of people talking about anything else they're going to be doing, any of the cast that they're doing, and uh, making sure that you tune in. Uh, next question. Next question from Sylvia. Hi, this is Sylvia again from Prestige Celebrity Magazine. And this question is for Keith Robinson. Um, your character, Miles, we see that he's going in this downward spiral and everything from the past just keeps creeping up. So how or when or who is going to be able to bring in that settling point so that, you know, maybe your character will be able to somewhat kind of stay stable, shall I say, or be able to become a somewhat saint? Um, you know, more so than being a sinner and being pulled back always. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a good question. I think that's the, the brilliance of the show and the characters that I can't even answer that. I don't know when. I just I think it's interesting to kind of take the journey and to walk with him because, you know, he's, he's kind of representing how we all live every day, just learning day to day how to be a better person. And I think um, he has these extreme shifts in his, in his, in his decision-making and his thought process. So you see a man struggling um, – every week and, and able to, so that, that's kind of what the interesting thing is. So you don't really know. You just know that his intention is to, uh, is to make the right decision, but whether he makes it or not, we have to see every Sunday. And that's right. Thank, Thank you. you so much. <laughs> that's what right. tuning in. Well, this has been great. It seems like a, it's a little over an hour now. So um, I would love for each cast member to, Briefly, um, give some last words. So let's start with um, let's start with uh, Clifton. Uh, you know, I just want to thank you all in the media. Uh, we are making history. I think you know we're all looking forward to season two, uh, doing even better numbers with you all's help. And uh, you know, we're just grateful that you know we have a show that has some some substance and. Um, we all just happy to be working as actors, you know. Um, I'm going to be in the uh, upcoming Tupac movie called All, all Eyes on Me. And of course, we talked about the teacher's son. I think uh, uh, with Christian and Vanessa. So thank you all so much. All right. Uh, um, yeah, this is Keith. Um, just, to piggyback, just to piggyback off of Cliff, uh, definitely grateful and, and really appreciate you guys uh, taking the time out. Because like uh, Vanessa said earlier, we, we can't uh, to get the word out there without you guys. So we appreciate you. And uh, just, I'm just happy to be a part of an amazing show with uh, great writing and kind of being a part of history and being in, at, the, at the ground floor and seeing where it's, where it's headed. And, uh, you know, as, a, as an actor, it's always great to be around family and be able to go to work with people you can really grow with and create with, so that's a blessing. And uh, I'm also being the new Tupac movie uh, June 16th, I think. Right, Cliff? Yes. Yeah, June, uh, June 16th, All Eyes on Me, which I'm excited about. And I got a brand-new album, which is coming out in the middle of the season, which I've been working hard at and Bounce has been so supportive of. And actually the first single off of the album is Love Somebody, which will be in episode four. And the album, Love Episodic, will be out March 31st. So you'll be able to hear and see me. So I'm excited about that. Great. Jasmine Burke. Yes, hello, hello, hello. Um, well, just thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We can't say it enough for 
talking to us today and helping us get the word out and continuing to support Saints and Sinners. We appreciate everybody so very, very much. Um, season two is about to be a wild and a crazy ride. Um, our whole creative team, Ty, everybody really put everything into it and we're grateful to be able to tell these stories. And uh, yeah, just, you know, you can follow me at T H E Jasmine Burke. That's at the Jasmine Burke, jasminburke.com to keep up with me as well. Um, I'm very pleased to be in star on Fox. Um, we just got renewed for season two for that. So really grateful to have that opportunity to work with Lee Daniels and everybody over there and um, I'll be co-starring in Addicted to You. It's a stage play that will be on television, starring myself, Latoya Luckett, Braley Evans, and Thomas Jones. And that will be coming to TV soon. And I'm a filmmaker, so I have a film that I've written and directed that we're about to start shooting. So I'm really, um, really grateful for that opportunity as well to um, be a creative person and be able to get projects out there and help put other people to work. So thank you guys so much. That's wonderful. Um, and then uh, did Demetria come back on? No, she didn't. Okay. No, she didn't. But she said she loves you guys, and uh, thank you so much. Okay. Okay. So Ty and Ricardo, you guys give me your last word. Ricardo. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Uh, go ahead, Ty. Okay, um, well, thank you, everybody. Just to repeat what everybody else said, thank you for the opportunity to talk about the show to bring up some more interest in this new season, and we're excited um, for the opportunity to um, give you something more to, uh, you know, chew on and entertain you and to talk about and have fun with, and we're excited about the new season. Ricardo? Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, I think everything's been said. Um, excited for season two. Um, also, um, I'll make a quick announcement about Man and Wife. Season 3 will premiere April 5th on Bounce TV. Uh, so look for that and uh, check, your, check your local listings. for uh, check, Go to BounceTV.com to get the, uh, the times and, um, excuse me, the, uh, the, the channels in your area. Um, and, and, you know, for as far as Saints and Sinners is concerned, you know, again, we're very excited uh, about, about – uh, about this season and, and, and excited for the reception. So please share with your audiences, you know, to tune in, to tune in time, March 5th, uh, sun, this Sunday, 9 p.m. Um, and, you know, for, for again, lastly, the announcement about uh, Brown Sugar, our new uh, subscription uh, SVOD service. Um, you know, go to uh, brownsugar.com to find out more about that, to see uh, the episodes if you miss them when they air. Great, thank you. So um, we appreciate it, everybody coming on. We appreciate the, the cast and and everybody involved on this line of thanks and centers. Thank you for great you're taking your time and really some great, great, great um, answers to the questions. We really appreciate it. And uh, again, thanks and centers uh, returns for second season on Sunday, March fifth, nine p.m. Eastern and Pacific Standard Time. The hashtag for Saints and Ten Centers is hashtag Saints and Centers. Um, and I know uh, a lot of the uh, cast members will be on, would be tweeting. So please encourage your, um, your audience to tweet and even tweet some of the uh, tweets being hashtag Saints and Centers. And uh, just talk about the show. They can do even live talking about it. You know, like, ooh, I didn't know she was going to do this or whatever. Just make it, it's going to be very exciting and a lot of mm-hmm. twists and turns. So, um, and I think we had everybody. Did anybody want to put give their particular um, Twitter account number? I think we got everybody, or address, rather. Um, yeah, this is Keith Robinson. Mine is Keith Sings. It's real easy. It's Keith Sings, F-I-N-G-S. Everything is Keith Sings. Okay. And Keith, you're going to be on Twitter, too, while it's on, on the air, correct? If anyone wants to tweet you, so encourage. Yeah, right, please encourage your audience to, to really tweet. We, we want to see as many people tweeting about this show as it's on and a, even after it's over than we ever had. I love a, somebody to break a record and just have a lot of tweeting going on. Um, okay. And right. so, anyway, any I think this is great. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate okay. it, and you all, all right. have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day.
All right. Thanks a lot.